we're going to do is we know that our bike's working fine, but we're going to go ahead and demonstrate the tests that we would do to test the components individually. So we're going to start with a parasitic draw test. Let's go ahead and switch meters. Now per the manual, cell is to disconnect the negative post. Thanks, Brent. Okay. Okay, let's show, set your meter right here. So what you're going to see here is when you do amp testing, we need to complete the system in what we call a series test. You have to watch some of our other videos for more information on that. But in the series test, we need to go through the meter. So what we want to do to not have a negative sign show up on this is we're going to go ahead and hook our positive up to our cable because the battery flow right now is going from the battery through the motorcycle electronics through the negative cable. Now we're going to go through the meter, out of the meter, and then we're going to go ultimately to ground with the ground cable here. Okay. What you're going to see right here is the service manual also tells us always start on the largest range. And on this particular bike, per the manual, can I see that manual again? Let me show the spec on that. It says that the maximum current leakage that we want to see is one tenth of a milliamp here. Okay? That's the maximum, one tenth of a milliamp. Okay? Now, when I start with this largest range, you're going to see that I got this kind of dancing back here. Every once in a while, you see that one that's dancing over there? Well, that really is a problem for us. Now we're going to switch to the smaller range. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to be able to see now that one's showing itself. So that's one milliamp. Okay, the key's in the off position, but it says the most we're supposed to have, and this is why this one's confusing, is we're actually only supposed to have one-tenth. We should be on the other side of that decimal, so we have a pretty excessive draw. Per the service manual, they tell us right away the next step, as we follow through here, it says if this problem is present, as we use our troubleshooting chart, chart it says, uh, where did you find that? Disconnect the regulator and rectifier. So this says incorrect. We go here and follow these steps. So that's how uh, a great way to use uh, troubleshooting charts. So let's just go ahead and do that. That component right here, you can see here when I disconnect this, did our problem go away? Most of it. We still have the clock hooked up and some other things, but we got down into a much smaller number here. Not completely, but if we were to take now we still see that we have a draw there. So what we could do is we can go ahead and start disconnecting fuses one at a time. So here, if we start looking at our fuses here, here's an odometer one. As I pull that one, we went to zero. Now I could have, show the camera up here, I could have disconnected the actual connector here. And you could go around, you could keep just disconnecting things until your problem goes away. And what's really nice about that is you know where it exists. This, this number is really, really, really super small here. But what we find to be interesting is we've already been playing around and di diagnosing this bike. And go ahead and go back here. Let's move our meter back to here. Okay, this is the regulator rectifier on this RC51. And one thing I, I knew and noticed about this motorcycle is this is not stock. Here's an actual stock one. You see it's much larger in size. My connectors are exactly the same but this is an OEM one, okay? Now I wanna show you something that's pretty interesting here. So we're gonna go ahead and once again, uh, we have this disconnected here. I'm gonna go ahead and fully disconnect the stator side of it too, okay? We have no change in anything. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up a stock OEM one. Yeah, you can grab that, Brent. Okay, now remember we had that one before, right? So now as we have this, we're, we're basically holding this onto the chassis here. I'll go ahead and even just hook it up fully. Okay, we've got this, you know, resting on here. It's not the same as being bolted on. So this one's disconnected and you can see what we have happening here. So watch this, just to prove a point, we do a lot of things around here called ABA testing. I'm gonna go ahead and Okay, I'm going to switch back to this aftermarket one, the one where we think we have the problem. 
and look at our problems back. Okay, so we know something's going problem present with this one, but the one thing we haven't done is actually ran the bike to see if the charging system still works. So go back to DC volts. could see through our testing, we'll come back around on this side, is that for whatever reason, this aftermarket, and we weren't looking for a problem, we weren't, we didn't like have a complaint like, hey, the battery's going dead or anything else. This would draw the battery dead though, super fast. When it's only supposed to be one tenth of a milliamp and it was drawing a uh, one milliamp that would definitely drain the ba battery a lot faster now the only way we'd really know how long is to leave it on there measure it each day and then see how long it would take before the bike wouldn't start but great example of how to identify that just disconnecting things find the source and then fortunately for us we had a different one to exchange out the service manual does just say to replace the part there's no test for this when that current draws like that it's just replace the part it's a problem and that's exactly what we did